Way back in 2021, I stumbled across the MT32 Pi project by Dale Winham, and since then I've been sort of obsessed. So join me in the basement for a discussion on what it is and what I built. It was the early 90s, and as a well, fairly geeky person, what I desired above all else, at least when it came to computers, was a sound blaster. Eventually, I was able to get one that was used, but fully functional. Many long nights were spent trying out just about every game I had. I was attempting to find the magical settings that would make it sound the best. Some games just called it an ad-lib, but it worked, and so I had no idea what that was about. Others just let me choose to use it as a sound blaster. However, there were a few that included even more options to choose from. None of those options worked, at least not with my original sound blaster. The most annoying one that kept popping up in my favorite adventure games was something called the Roland MT32. Being the days before we had the internet, and me being born without any sense of musical ability, it took me some time before learning what a MIDI module actually was. The first time that I could actually recall reading about them was from this exact magazine. Not that I read very much of it at the time. Do you know why? Because this was what I found on one of the cover discs. And yes, Doom has to be loud. For what it is, MIDI is a standard. It describes how to talk to devices used in musical production. And for us gamers, the one that we all wanted was the Roland MT32. This is the one I have, because if I'm going to spend all this time on building the bulky MIDI 32 in order to emulate one, I need to experience what the real thing actually sounds like too. For those familiar with them, they uh, will surely recognize this as the older MT32. What that means is that it's got the correct uh, sounds and, well, bugs. For a gamer, it's the one that's mostly desired. For a direct comparison, let's just go with something familiar and put the ad-lib version of Monkey Island through my AWE32. And to me that was the sound of happy memories. But for the sake of comparison, let's just finish rewinding the tape and run it through the MT32 instead. You can't help but, well, smile when listening to that. Owning an MT32 does come at a cost though. The first one is just the uh, price you're expecting. The second is that 
the device may not be directly usable for some of the games. The reason for this is that early um, titles that can use the MT32 also expect something called an intelligent mode MPU that should sit between the two. If money is no object, you could probably get one, but they'll be priced many times more than the module itself. And software solutions can help with that, but if there's a special game that you want to play on your computer with the MT32, please check before buying something. While the MT32 is pretty great once you do get it up and running, there is one point where it does fall short. The MT32 uh, predates what we now call General MIDI. While there are ways around it, but for newer games where General MIDI is the standard option, you generally want something newer in a MIDI module. For those early 90s titles, the uh, Roland SC55 is probably most period correct and as far as I know it was the one used when composing the music for the Doom game. However, I don't have an SC55, what I have is the SC88 which handily comes with a button on it to put it into SC55. MIDI map. So for most cases it's a 2 for 1. For what it may sound like, let's run through the same Doom clip shown earlier. Except this time the Vulcan MIDI 32 will be playing as an SC55. Getting back to the topic of today, the bulky MIDI 32 itself. As mentioned earlier, running the MT32 Pi software by Dale Winham. The point where all this comes together in the various meanderings that I've subjected you to is that the software comes with two distinct modes of operation. One is MT32 mode. The second is for general MIDI running a sound font of your choice. The sound font is what gives the device the ability to sound entirely different. The reason being that well, there are differences from one guitar to another and they can sound entirely different and still be a guitar. Taking a look at the back of the bulky MIDI 32 it should be evident that the device has a lot in common with their original counterparts. We are still using 5 pin DIN plugs to connect them together. And from the system we are connecting it to, it should communicate just like the original module did. The downside is that you still have the same level of compatibility as with the original module. So if it required intelligent mode MPU, then you still require it with this one. However, with the MT32 Pi solution, you get a lot of MIDI modules for the price of a third of one. Though, as in the case of the bulky MIDI 32, you may have to build it yourself. All of the design files have been made available but if uh, written build instructions aren't your thing, I'm working on a video and that will probably come sometime in the future. Do however take notice that the bulky MIDI 32 has uh, more or less become a collection of MIDI devices that I've been working on. So feel free to have a look around. You may in particular find that the adapter section handy as most of it is uh, standard MIDI or in some way related to each other. Uh, you can use them interchangeably with the original equipment. 
if you have it. One word of caution though, this is just my hobby, so whatever you build, whatever you connect to it, well, that's on you. The only guarantee that I can give you is that there isn't one. I understand that uh, taking all this in isn't easy, but to try and help make things more approachable, I've uh, put together a little getting started section on the repository. By far, I recommend just using Scum VM as your first foray into the world of MIDI. For the remainder of this episode, I have uh, tried making some game footage. I hope you'll just enjoy them for what they are.
controls doom controls the spice. The Emperor has proposed a challenge to each of the houses. The house that produces the most spice will control doom. There are no set territories and no rules of engagement. Vast armies have arrived. The noble Atreides. The insidious Ordos. And the evil Harkonnen. Only one house will prevail. Your battle for doom begins now. Well, then that's it for the moment. Bye.